What's going on guys? Zach and Sammy the Whammy are back here today and this is a video we've been trying to do for weeks. We ran out of time last time but it's finally happening. We're going to be doing a shoe review, a shoe tier list of every single shoe that we carry specifically at Pro Bike and Run. So these opinions are our own and we're going to be basing it a lot off of how the shoes have sold and how the general population tends to favor them, what they say about them. So don't get too angry if yes, you disagree. Exactly. I mean, we've fit thousands and thousands of people. I think we have a decent idea of what people tend to like as well from our personal experiences of wearing the shoes, testing them, and actually running in them. What's going to be considered a better shoe versus something that's either not as exciting or just doesn't perform as well. Feel free to let us know in the comment section below kind of what you think about the shoe. If you disagree or if you agree on something, maybe you learned something, we'd be happy to discuss that below. And without further ado, I think it's fair that we start with Brooks, the tried yes. and true, I guess, brand of the people. We're not going to spend too much time going in depth on all this because we've got a lot of shoes. So starting off with the Brooks Ghost, what are you thinking? This is literally the most average running shoe on the market. It does nothing good, but also does nothing bad. I have nothing more to say about it. It's literally a shoe. All right, three, three two, two, one, B. C. It's I've, a C tier shoe. It's the most average shoe there is. I'm going to put it in mid B tier. So we've got to do a little compromising. Yeah, here. I think it should be either low B or high C. We'll it's put it right in, in the middle. Because it's so many people buy it and it doesn't really get returned that much. Yeah, okay. I'll, B? I'll give you that. All it's right. B. All right. <laughs> the Trace. Okay, so this is like Brooks's budget shoe, which I don't understand the purpose of budget shoes because there's a thing called clearance and you can get better shoes for that. And also, the research and development that goes into a shoe like this is so much less than a shoe that costs 30 or $40 more. I mean, if you're spending $100 or less on a shoe, it's gonna be pretty garbage in comparison to like 140 to 160 range. So, yeah. honestly, right off the get-go, I guess for the price, that kind of helps it a little bit. But yeah, D. Yeah, low D. All right, a good shoe. <laughs> yep, finally. So uh, the Brooks rep was actually kind enough to give us a free pair of these. So I still run in this. This is my pair right here. And I've been loving this shoe quite a lot. Yeah, but. it's a really great shoe. Really, really bouncy DNA amp foam in this. Um, I, I, it's not the softest shoe out there, but for its purposes, I do think it's Definitely a pretty good shoe. It, for a non-plated shoe, it's super fast. Yeah. It's super reliable. You can do your long runs in it. You can do your easy runs in it. It's very versatile. So what do you think? All right, right off the three, game? two, one, A. A. Okay, so the Dyad, which is actually going to be discontinued after this uh, specific want generation here. But, I mean, I don't have any beef with the Dyad, but, like, I mean, there's a lot of people that use it. It's a very, have... it works for a very specific niche Yeah, of it's, it's almost a straight-lasted frame here. It has the dual, like, pods there for arch support and stuff. I wouldn't recommend anyone really run in it, but like, you know, it's kind of serves its own purpose for what it is. See. See. Great shoe. Brooks's best shoe in my opinion, but go ahead. I you, agree. you run in this yeah, one. Yeah, I physically run in this shoe. Currently, I've worn its predecessors. I love this shoe a lot and what I've noticed recently here, this shoe's probably been the best seller the it last It is our best weeks. selling shoe in our company, I yeah, believe. Yeah, when I first started working here, it was the Bondi, then it went to the A6 Gel Nimbus, and now it's this Glycerin. A. a. Okay. Hi, A. The Ghost Max. The Ghost Max. Fun fact, if you're watching all these videos, we're literally going to go to the other side of the floor and record a shoe review on this afterwards, so don't go too much into it, yeah, Sammy. Right you have now. a lot more experience with this shoe than I do, but yeah. you so say your piece on it, yeah, I guess. I've, I've got like 20 miles on it right now. I've really been in enjoying it. That's all I'll say. This shoe will be replacing the Brooks Dyad, so we'll see what the general population thinks yeah, about it. I, I like it. High a. B. Okay. High B. Okay, I put in B. I, I trust your opinion. I was going to say yeah. A, but whatever you think. So basically these shoes here, they're just the, the Ghost and the Glycerin, but with the guide rails, so we're just going to put them the, basically That's the in, adrenaline. Yeah, yeah, we're going to put them basically in the same tiers because there's nothing really different about them. A6, the goaded brand, the best brand out of every brand on the market. We, we talked about biases and we are totally biased towards A6. We're going to get that right out of the way. Um, I think they make the best lineup from a walking shoe to a race day shoe. They have the best lineup, everything in between, out of anything on the market, in my personal opinion. Cumulus is like their mid-level cushion shoe. I personally think it's the best mid-level cushion shoe on the market. I think it's I best at what it does. A. S. I was going to say S because it's the best mid-level cushion shoe. I'll put it in S. Yeah. Okay. The Nova Blast. What a shoe. <laughs> yeah, I, I will say compared to 
like most of the Asics products and all the hype around it, it might be a little bit. It's overrated. overhyped. It's definitely yeah. overhyped. It's not like this amazing shoe, but it's definitely still a great shoe. I, I still think I prefer the Hyperion Max in Brooks over this shoe. That's fair. B. A. Okay. Fair. High B. High B. Okay. I, I yep. do think the shoe. We'll is do slightly... a little compromising. You want to go A? Yeah, I it think just because of how popular well. yeah. it is, yeah. I, I really do like that shoe. We have a lot to say about this shoe, but very little time, so we'll make it brief. This is probably the best shoe I've ever worn in yeah. my life. It's a little bit clunky. You're not going to run a PR in it, but what do you think, Sam? It's the best daily trainer on the market. There's literally no... You can't argue that point, unless you like don't like how soft it is, which it's really soft, but in my opinion, it's the best daily trainer on the market. This shoe has completely changed Asics as a brand, like... For sales, this is one of the best-selling shoes on the market right yeah, now. Yeah, and they've really revolutionized it from the 25, uh, from the 24 to the 25. It's like so much better. What else? We, we know this is an S, yeah. so just put it in S. S. <laughs> <laughs> the GT2000, a classic stability shoe. I wear stability shoes most of the time when I run, so the I think this is one of the better stability shoes on the market. It's soft, good support, all that good stuff. I'd say probably B or A. Because of its versatility, I want to put it in A. Okay, let's put it in A. Yeah. The Gel Kyano 30, the Sam most revolutionary stability shoe on the market. Sam wears this shoe, so I'm going to let him I do the I ran 10 miles here. in the, this morning. It's the best stability shoe on the market. Again, it's basically the Nimbus, but with the 4D guidance system, which has that foam piece, the little bit of guide rails here, the supportive upper, and the more straight lasted kind of design. S tier all day is the best stability shoe. I'll go market. with that. Now, Mizuno is probably the most narrow cut shoe on the market. Like, you know, those Asian brands, they just have smaller feet, I guess. Mizuno's but. weird, man, but I, <laughs> they're all right most of the time. Yeah, the, for I, instance, the Wave Rider is a good mid level cushion I, shoe. I, I'd say, and I think you'd agree, this is probably their best shoe. But then again, it, you were It's the one of their better shoes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's better than the Ghost, but, and the Wave Plate's nice, the foam's nice. It's not like great, though. B. B. Okay. <laughs> the Wave Sky, just a max cushion version of the Rider, it's essentially. It's like 900 pounds. Yeah, it's very heavy, <laughs> and also 170 bucks for, that's expensive for, that's more expensive than the average max cushion shoe. I don't know why they do that, and for that reason, I think we it's, know where this needs to go. It's like C or D. I'm putting so, it in low C. Yeah, yeah. C, yeah, it's, it's just okay. Yeah, so the Inspire, this is basically the stability version of the Wave Rider. I think it fits pretty similarly with the Wave Rider. We don't have the newest version, but you know, I think it's relatively the same mm -hmm. um, for yeah. the ranking. So whatever B tier. Yeah, we'll go yeah. with that since you wear it. Yep. And the Wave Horizon, which is basically the stability version of the Sky. This it's about everything's about the same. And it the only thing that I like about this shoe more is the upper. It's a lot more accommodating for foot shapes. And, it fits it's wide for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah. For that reason, I would put it ahead of the Sky just because of that versatility. But other than that, it's mostly the same as far as the cushioning and everything like that. So, so just like C tier. C plus, yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Oh, no. Folks. All right. This so thing. you probably have heard of a... I guess the newest generation of this shoe, the one that... No, the Wave Rebellion Pro is actually pretty good. Yeah, this is just the this, Wave Rebellion. This one's not going to tear your Achilles, but it's going to do something much worse. It's going to make you run slow, and you're going to feel gonna, horrible while doing this it. This is one of the worst shoes ever made. It's so bad. Like, I don't even know what the We're, deal is We don't is need to go into it. It's, I it's probably F. never sold a pair of yeah. these in my life, and they're marked down like 120 bucks or something. Yeah. F tier. F tier, for sure. New Balance, the American brand. They really are the American <laughs> brand. Like they, I feel like they disperse across the widest demographic. Super reliable shoes. They're unlike the first three brands that we went through. These tend to fit a little more liberally width-wise. So the 880. The 880, yeah, it's their mid-level cushion shoe. The dual density foam is cool. Other than that, though, its shoe doesn't really do it for me in a lot of ways. I think super it falls, average. Yeah, it's pretty average. I'd say if you. I actually kind of like the ghost more than the shoe. To be yeah, I'd put you. this like low B. Yeah, I mean, maybe even C, dude. I don't know. It's not that good. <laughs> I see. It's behind the ghost. Yeah, like, they they have softened it up a little bit, but other than that, it's I'd put bad. it in C, bro. Yeah, we we'll put it in C. It's like it's just okay. I think the ghost and the wave rider are better than it. Oh yes, the 1080. Ignore the colorway, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the the 1080. I think Sam and I are gonna be pretty optimistic and positive about it. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's good. Uh, good price range. The upper works for a lot of people with wider feet since it's really stretchy as well. Low a. Way. Yep. A tier. Ah, the oh, New yes. Balance More. I'm going to link this down in the description, but if you haven't seen it, we did a shoe review comparing this to the Hoka Bondi, which is probably like its best rival. And if you want to see that, 
Check it out. This is very similar to the Nimbus, except a lower drop, a much more aggressive rocker geometry to it. Um, I find the foam, honestly, to be even a little bit more squishy. I think it's one of the best daily trainers on the market for sure. Um, yeah, right in. You run in it a lot. I, I love this shoe. I'm probably going to get another pair soon. Yeah. But with that being said, S tier. Yeah, I was going to say S tier. S, -tier. S, S lower S tier, though. Yeah, it's not Nimbus, but. You hate, okay, you, he hates this shoe All for right. some reason. It's a super comp. It's a carbon plated shoe. And I'm yeah. going to tell you why I hate it. I just think it's redundant because it feels heavy. It is heavy compared to something like the Vaporfly, which we should do right after. Sure. Yeah. We'll but do I think this shoe, it's really, really squishy and bouncy, and it has that really nice rocker to it, and then the how it's split down the middle to kind of spread apart to give you stability. I like this shoe. I think this is going to be one of our biggest disagreements. Three, Three two, two, one, A. <laughs> yeah, I think I like this shoe. But All right, we got to meet in the middle. Yeah, I'll put low, it in. Low B. Yeah, I put in B for the popularity of it. That, You're like the only person that doesn't like this shoe. I don't. I think it looks cool, but I just don't like it at all. I, I I've tried it. It's not for Dude, me. Okay, so it's Hoka time. Or it's rebel. Hoka time. So this is where all the dislikes are gonna come from. So let's start with the latest model. Their um, only good shoe. No, no. I'm just kidding. They have two. At, at least two. So <laughs> the Hoka Mock. Um, it's not a plated shoe, but it's nice and light. And we're just gonna get this right out of the way. The reason why we hate so much on Hoka, one, because they are extremely oversold. Every person that comes into the store with some sort of injury, maybe they saw a PT or a doctor or a podiatrist. Always Hoka. Always recommending always. Hoka. If you're recommending like, someone with plantar fasciitis to get Hoka, that's literally counterintuitive because of the low heel toe drop. It's not going to help your plantar issues, Achilles, anything like that. But the other reason is the dreaded Hoka poke, which, which we we'll get, get to yeah. in a little bit here. So for the mock, what do you say? I like this shoe yeah, personally. It's good. It's really popular as well. Um, I wish we had more inventory on it because I would sell it more. Yeah, I think it's low A. Low A, yeah, yeah. for sure. We'll there are the other mock. good shoes. We're going to get the positivity out of the way right off the bat. So this is the Rincon, and it's personally, good. this is my favorite Hoka shoe. Yeah, it's a budget shoe, but it's not like a really bad budget shoe. It was kind of designed for like that first kind of entry level runner, but it's such a good shoe. The only problem I have with it is durability because there's not a whole lot of rubber yeah. coverage on the bottom. But other than that, I mean, I love this shoe. It's super lightweight. That's like the yeah. main thing about it. But I'm thinking A as well for this I'm, one. I'm going high A. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be my highest rated Hoka, by the way. Okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> the Hoka Clifton. It's a it's a cool color, you know. It's, really stands it's out. not a bad shoe. It's it's good. I can't wear it. He can't wear it. A lot of people return it because they get pressure right in here, and we call this the Hoka poke, where it pokes you right in the arch here because of how narrow it fits in the midfoot. I don't know who's at Hoka designing shoes, but they have a really narrow foot. For and, the... <laughs> and I don't know why they do it because how many people do you think get it? They're losing at least like a quarter of their customer base just solely off of that yeah like one out of four people feel it to the point where they're not going to want to buy that shoe, yeah, or if 100%. they buy it they're going to return it because they're like why am i getting blisters here if this shoe didn't have that it would be much higher i think it's better than the ghost it's better than the wave rider and everything like that the midsole foam is soft and squishy the rocker is nice but that they just I, like i'm telling you we fit thousands of people probably for this specific shoe or the next shoe on this and probably you know 200 to 300 of them have turned it down because of this specific reason. Because B. it sells so good, I'll give it a higher rating, but even then, it's still yeah, going to be low. I'm going to go B. mid C. I was going to go B just because of how popular it is, but. We'll go B. We'll yeah, go B. That's B. fair. Oh, God. <laughs> I actually forgot that we had this. I Sorry. forgot too until we picked All it up. All right, so think of this shoe as literally the much worse version of the Clifton. This is the Hoka Kawana. We're just going to say it right off the this bat. This thing's F. F. It's the it's worst F. shoe ever. Like, I don't know what they were thinking with this. All right, the this, Bondi. All right, you, if you know Hoka, you definitely know this shoe. This is their Max Cushion shoe. We describe it as the big brother of the Clifton. One of our best-selling shoes in our company, and for good reason. It's a good shoe. I, I ran in the 7, the Bondi 7, for like a year in college, and I got the Hoka poke in it, but it's still like, you know, it's still decent. I think it's better than some Max Cushion shoes, yeah. definitely It's better not than all. the Clifton. Yeah. But once again, that Hoka poke to the point, I can't wear the shoe, like it will physically hurt me. Like I can't wear it throughout the store. Yeah. And for that reason, I will just put it right above the Clifton at like a B plus. Yeah, B, I, I B put it B maybe low A because it's just yeah. so popular. I'll put B plus. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, probably the best in B tier. The Arahi. This is a stability shoe. The J frame. It's the Clifton with the J frame basically. Um, so. Maybe slightly more firm as far as the midsole foam, mm -hmm. but 
it's mostly the same other than I, that. I think they're like all right next to each yeah, other. Yeah, put them put it in B. <laughs> we are on to Saucony now. In my opinion, the second best brand on the market right now. So the Saucony Ride. It's their mid-level cushion shoe. I think it's better than most, but it's not amazing or anything yeah. like that. I, I wore think, it when I was in high school and middle school and had a good experience yeah. with it, but all in all, it's pretty it's, average. The next generation of this shoe with the TPU foam is going to be like crazy good in my opinion. But, but for now, like uh, B plus. Yeah, high yeah, B. Yeah. I'd agree with that. This one here we're going to disagree with. I, I don't know. Like this oh, shoe. another thing, we did a shoe review on this like about a year ago. Yeah, well, the, well, 20s. the, the 20, but it's basically it's the same. It's just a different upper now. And check that out. We'll link that yeah, in the description. Yeah, the Saucony Triumph uses the TPU foam, which is the Power Run Plus, which is really bouncy, really soft. You're not the hugest fan of it in comparison, but I really like this midsole foam. I, I think it's going to be closer than you think. I don't own it, but I like the shoe a lot. It's definitely not my favorite. At first, I liked it a lot more than I do now, but. Anyway. Yeah, three, two, one, high, high B. A. I think it's A. We'll go low A then. We'll I, this is, dude, this thing's better than the glycerin in my opinion. I, I like the glycerin more, I'll say that. No, this thing's better than <laughs> Okay, so the Sammy. guide. Yeah, I don't really wear this one. I don't like this. Oh, the this new one. one is very aggressive. Yeah, it's really aggressive. This is the guide, which is basically the stability version of the ride. It has that plastic medial post right here, and it's really aggressive, so much so that I don't really like wearing it. I don't like this shoe a whole lot. I know it's kind of the same thing as the ride, but just because of how aggressive the midsole or the uh, the medial support is in this one, I'd put it a tier lower than the I ride. It, C. I put it in like C. Yeah, yeah. I put it in C as well. Our boss's favorite shoe. The Kinvara is an interesting one because it's just like so, I refer to it as almost like a minimalist shoe. There's not yeah. a lot to it. The this tread is, is kind of meh. It's the Saucony Rincon, essentially. Yeah, and but not as good. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's a little bit not as not as good, but the foam's really nice. I think it holds up maybe even a little bit better than the yeah. Rincon. If you opinion. want something a little lighter that's not plated, that's not going to hurt your arch, I mean, this is a pretty standard Good price point shoe. for it as yeah, well. Yeah, it's so. also nice and cheap. I'd put this one... Low B. Low B. We're getting into the speed shoes from Saucony, which tends to be our more big... Okay, so this so, shoe... We, we don't carry a lot of speed shoes to begin with, so I say we just go through them all now. Yeah, uh, let's The just ones do we them really all. carry are Saucony. Yeah. And I guess that Rebellion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this thing is, in my opinion, this is the most overrated, like, uh, I guess, plated, like, trainer sort of mm -hmm. tempo shoe on the market. The Endorphin Speed 3. I like the Endorphin Speed 1 and the 2 a lot. He, like, loved the 1. Yeah. I think this one, it has the Power Run PB foam, so it's really bouncy. But the plate, I, I can't even feel the plate in it. It's like, it's, I'm not it's, a fan it's of it too either. bendy. It doesn't do a whole um, lot for me. Yeah, I honestly, I, I know this is going to get the most hate probably out of any other shoe, maybe except for some of the Hoka's, but I'd put this shoe in C tier. I don't, I think for the price. I, I'd, I'd put it, the price definitely plays a huge role. I didn't even consider that. I'd put it at the very highest, like just a super average B. Dude, there's so much better stuff out there that's going to give you more responsiveness. Just a better ride overall than this, this specific one. I think it's really overrated, but that's my opinion. Now on to the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Sammy wears this shoe. I'm not the biggest fan of it, so I'll kind of let him do the yeah, talking. Yeah, I have this shoe. I think out of all the plated options on the market, it's definitely towards the top. I think the plate might be placed a little bit too high in it. When I do really long tempos, I can start to feel the plate, and it like kind of hurts. But the foam is really nice. Power Run PB again. Really, really squishy, really bouncy. Rocker's nice in this shoe. I think it's near the top. I don't think it's at the top. So in my opinion, this is an A-tier shoe. I'd agree with that. Endorphin Elite which is their top of the range plated shoe that Saucony makes. It's like $275, which it's very expensive. I, in my opinion, I think the Pro is better in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. It uses the Power on HG foam, which is a even more bouncy Piba based foam. Oh my gosh, there's a spider in there. <laughs> I get a, like a poke right here in the heel when I wear it, but I mean, I personally think that it's like they say you have to run fast in it to kind of get like a feel for the shoe and it's what if i don't want to go fast yeah, well it, no <laughs> i mean i did like two miles at like five minute pace on the treadmill just one day in one of these and it's like i just didn't get that like squishiness and the comfort i was looking for in, in a shoe and, like and for this. the price it's more than like a vapor fly yeah, that's I've, something yeah. to consider and i don't think it's nearly as good and for that reason i'd put it in, in a low b i'd put it in b on to the metaspeed sky which we do not carry here so ignore that i like 
this shoe a lot. The only thing I don't like about it is the five millimeter drop, which is going to kill your Achilles, in yeah. my opinion, if like I'm anything over a half marathon. But anything under a marathon, I think this is a great shoe for that distance. It's a little bit firmer. It's very it, stiff. Yeah, really stiff. Very and also stiff. the foam isn't as squishy, but it's still relatively soft. Really good energy return on this one. Again, out of all the plated shoes on the market, I'd put this one near the top, but not at the top. I'd yeah. put it in A. Yeah, like mid A. Nike is a brand that we also do not carry, so. But we included this shoe just because of how important it is to the plated shoe on the market. I got my, this is the Vaporfly 2. I got my Vaporfly 3s in the mail and they feel pretty similar. I haven't really worn them yet, but the 2 is such a great shoe. I've run so many races in it. I ran a 10K last week. It's so great for that, like, you could go as low as a mile all the way up to ultra marathons in this shoe. It's super comfortable, super responsive. It's, it's pretty durable as well. I, it's the yeah, best I, I shoe. put a considerable amount. This is actually my pair. I put a lot of miles in on it. It's just like super versatile and super um, reliable. Yeah, and it's it, the best plated shoe. Yeah, the it's unbeatable at the moment. So yeah. I'd put it in S tier. Yep. We just talked about a bunch of fast shoes. Now it's time to talk about a bunch of slow shoes. <laughs> right out the gate, we're gonna say this is a very niche brand. Like, you've gotta be looking for something very specific when you go to Ultra. They are least sold brand that we carry. Start with their minimal cushion shoe, the Escalante. Yeah. Right off the gate, I'd like to say I love the shape of their shoes. Yeah, the toe I box is nice, but I, I actually commented on a YouTube video the other day because they just came out with a shoe with a four millimeter drop, which is hilarious because they've been pushing zero drop for so long. But in my opinion, if you're doing any sorts of serious mileage, zero drop, you're, unless you're a specifically, like specific case where you have like really, really bad like back or knees or hips or something like that, well, zero drop is going to destroy you. Yeah. <laughs> if you want something super lightweight and minimalist, Ultra might be your go-to. Yeah, in but. my opinion, their shoe technology was invented for a reason to improve how people run. And going backwards in time, like with something like this, I don't think it does a service. Yeah. And as long. a guy with Achilles issues already, dude, I'm gonna my Achilles is gonna tear and roll up my leg like a fruit by the yeah. foot if I wear something. Like, like you this. said, extremely niche. There's definitely people that find success in their shoes, but the fact that they're changing up to a four millimeter drop. That's where in it gets interesting. One, yeah, they, they know. They yeah. know what they're doing to people. So this shoe, yeah. it's D. Yeah, the Torin. Okay, this is like their flagship road shoe. This that is they like make. the next step up from that Escalante. It's their cushioned shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Via Olympia is like their max cushion shoe. This is like their mid max cushion shoe. Mm. It's all right. Again, the zero it's drop. It's a little bit it above the Escalante. Yeah, I put it in low C. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I mean, not it's just, much they're so low. unwearable for runners. <laughs> and once again, like, I understand somebody watching this video is definitely like, Ultra salty. All day. They're so salty. But about understand, this. like, that is such a, like, it, you have to be so niche to wear ultra. You have to be looking for something super specific. The average person is not going to fare well in ultra. We don't sell them. Yes. Either. They all don't right. sell. Anyway, <laughs> this is where it's going to get even worse. This is what, the provision? The yeah. provision. I, it's like the stability version of the Rivera. I don't even yeah, know. It's very it's, mild. Very yeah. mild. It's, um, it's, it's actually not bad. If I was going to run in an ultra, I'd run in this the one. the same as the Torin, essentially. Yeah, I'd put it in, in, in honestly, I'd put it in D. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it in low C. It's, it's C. Yeah. yeah, the Paradigm actually has have, guide rails, right? Yeah, it has yeah. the guide rails. I think we have two of these in inventory. As you can probably imagine. Not very popular. <laughs> it's uh, it's nice and wide, and it's zero it's drop. A, it's got some it's bulk cushion. to it's it. It's cushiony, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's probably the co most cushiony of our options here, but still, I'd put it in low C. Claire Resting likes D. it. Yeah, it's, She gets some by the... It's caressing D tier, but we'll put it in C for Claire. <laughs> Last, but certainly not least, folks, thank you so much for tuning in and staying till this point if you have. We're on the trail shoes. I don't really trail run a whole lot. I trail run with our boss like three times a year. You similar. The, the only trail shoe You're I You're doing a 50K in the trails. Yeah, so. I'll be wearing well, the Peregrine, but I'm just kind of, I'm new to that sort of yeah. scene. Yeah, I wish our boss was here because he could give you a better idea. I mean, we've worn all of these. We've done some jogs in some of them, not really in the trails, mm -hmm. but again, off of what we've sold to people and what has been returned and what we've you had good luck with people saying they've had good luck with, you know, this is kind of our opinion on them. Yeah. So, so this, the divide. We just got it. Yeah. I don't know much about it other than the fact it's kind of like a starting shoe. Think yeah. of it as like the ghost. The lugs are not too aggressive on the bottom of it. So like, and yeah. this is the waterproof version yeah. as well. I know it's like pretty standard neutral, but other than yeah. that, it's not. Like, it's pretty 
average below average. I'd put I'd it put in, it like, in C. C. Yeah. <laughs> and another Brooks option, the Caldera. Uses the nitrogen-infused EVA. It's good. It's very cushy. It's I good. feel taller in it, you know, as a short guy. It's My girlfriend, nice. his sister, wears this shoe for her trail runs. I also know Mostly softball. Mostly for softball. <laughs> with that being said, I'd just put it in the B tier. I, high B. It's high B, yeah. Honestly, mm -hmm. for trail shoes, this might be A. Like I, I can put four, a trail shoe four in Four trail shoes. Like We're talking about like best trail shoe, worst trail shoe. I'd put it in A for trail I shoes. I can get behind that. Another one we're going to disagree heavily oh, this on. This is going to be a big disagreement. <laughs> the biggest one of all. This is my trail shoe I run in most of the time. And I like it because I like my trail shoes to be stiff. If you step on a rock, you don't want to feel it. And this has the rock oh, blade in it. Oh, this thing has a killer rock blade. I'll give yeah. it that. And it's good lugs, good support, all right cushion. But it, you it hate it. It is just so <laughs> stiff and uncomfortable. It's my, good. It's good. I hate it. Be nice and put it in a low C, even though it should be okay. D. Okay, I was going to put it in B, so C works. Okay. All right, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> now on to the Peregrine. Yes, this is the average trail shoe. This is shoe. the Peregrine 13. <laughs> and I actually own this shoe. I like the shoe a lot. Pretty average. Yeah, pretty average. Yeah. It fits pretty narrow, not a whole lot of cushion either, but it's, nice it's a great trail shoe. There's nothing really bad to yeah. say about it. I put it in B. That there's nothing yeah, more to say. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. The Stinson. <laughs> the Stinson. So we got this guy a couple weeks ago. I got one of these for my seed shoes. I like it. He doesn't like it. I, I don't like it, and as you can probably imagine, why? I get the poke in it a little bit. I don't. I don't in this Yeah, I, I get it, and for that reason, I can't give it a good ranking. It's good cushion. It's nice. It's very cushion. If I was going to do a trail run, no, I'd probably pull that one. Do you want to put it high C, low B? Low B? I put it in B. I'll, 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 meet, you. In I'll B. meet you at low B, B for that, all right? The Speed Goat, which is Hoka's flagship trail shoe. If I <laughs> if I wore a Hoka trail shoe, I'd go with this guy. Even then, it's once again not my favorite. I'm biased. It's average. It's really average. Yeah. Good cushion, decent traction. It's much lighter than the Stinson. I get the poke in this one. I get it as well. Yeah. So I'm trying to be nice, but it's for that C. reason, it's right above the Stinson. Eh, maybe well, put it in well, B. Right, yeah. right, I, I say it's pretty put, popular. Yeah, put it in B. It's kind of popular. Its popularity helps it out. Oh, the baby. trail moor. Oh. It's like the moor, but trail. Everything we said about the moor, it's the same thing, but with the, the teeth at yeah. the bottom. A little bit of a wider... Like, it, it fits yeah, wide. Yeah. Treads all right. Like yeah. compared to most trail shoes, that's the only like. Yeah, bad I've sold thing about a lot it. of these. The only thing I kind of see that people would say is that it might be a little bit unstable on super technical stuff. But dude, if you're doing like an ultra marathon and you don't really care about time, just trying to get it done like a hundred mile race, this is such a great shoe for that. I'd put it in high A. I'd put it in A. It's not quite S tier, but it's yeah. It's a fabulous shoe. Yeah. I know we really like threw ultra under the bus, but. Trail shoes are where ultra is like good because drop does not matter when you're in exactly. the trails because you're landing in different ways. And this is kind of like where they shine, in my opinion. The Lone Peak is, this is like my their favorite flagship. ultra shoe. Yeah, it's their flagship shoe. Our boss loves this shoe. I think as far as trail shoes goes, popularity, it's high. Comfort, it's high. Definitely best, Based, best shoe. It's doing what it's designed to do in this case, which is run on trails. It's yeah. super reliable, super lightweight. It's got good protection in the upper there. It's got a solid rock blade. I'd put it in A tier. It's A, yeah. It's yeah. definitely Ultra's best shoe. It's their flagship shoe. It's the Ultra shoe that we sell the most of as well. But now, okay. on the other end of the spectrum, we have this shoe here. It's called the Ultra Timp. And I can't personally say I've done a run in it, but our boss, who loves the Lone Peak more than anything in the world... He doesn't like this shoe. ...hates this shoe. He <laughs> couldn't make it more than a few minutes in it, and I haven't heard it's a lot of good softer. things about it. Yeah, it's softer. It's, it fits really, really wide. Other than that, though, like... There's not much. There's it it not looks whole, cool. That's yeah, a nice blue, but it's, it's, that doesn't really help. I it. don't personally <laughs> hate it, but... I would I think understand it's D. a D, yeah. yeah. It's probably a D tier shoe. The last shoe on our entire Thank video. Thank you so much for chilling out. The Ultra Olympus. Okay, let's just be real here. This shoe is like $180. A lot of people come in here looking for like a proper hiking shoe that's got a lot to it. It goes up high on that ankle. And I, they do make an Yeah, an they Olympus make a mid version. for that one as well. But it just... It's not really worth the money, to make a long story short. Yeah. It's wide. It's got good grip as well. I'd say this one probably is the best tread out of the, all the of them. The heel's really nice. I like how it comes up yeah. high here and really right. I'll just, locks Let's just cut to the chase. It's D tier. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's above the temp, though. Yeah, it's above it's the temp. It's a high temp. D. Yeah. Anyway, guys, 
Thank you so much for watching. I have no idea how long this video is going to be, but I appreciate you sticking around. For sure. Thanks so much to Sam for uh, stepping in. We were going to do our shoe review of the ghost, but we ran out of time, baby. We got too locked in. We open in 15 minutes. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. And also and subscribe. Yes. If you haven't already. Get ready to get roasted. Yeah, don't, don't roast me. <laughs> I, I, we tried to keep it fair. Everybody has different opinions. Yeah. But and you know there's someone out there that loves the corn. Exactly. Right? You know there's someone who loves yeah. that and shit. And we'd love to hear about it in the comments if you disagree or agree with something. I'd let it maybe give us some insights on the shoes that we got wrong or could have known better. I'm going to work. <laughs> yeah, see you guys.